the story really is that, that we met Ellen. That, that was how this started. People from my foundation's 11th Hour Racing Program wanted to meet Ellen, wanted Ellen to be an ambassador for our programs. We thought, wouldn't that be nice? And they called her up, kind of a cold call. And she very graciously said, yes, I'll be in London. If you're passing through, come and meet me. So we did. And we had a great meeting. We had dinner. We started talking about our mutual interests and how they aligned and kept looking for ways that we might work together. Because our foundation in, in the U.S. is really focused on uh, the wiser use of energy and resources in this century. That's the big goal that we have. And what Ellen MacArthur's foundation has is an education program focused on achieving this with an economically viable model of a circular economy. We, we just loved the way our ideas kind of melded and when we thought about what would be the most effective way to invest resources, we thought, let's do a fellowship program. We can create a program for graduate students where they can go to universities with mentors that were inside the system who understand how to challenge this model, how to make it stronger, and we can graduate year after year people with this training and with this perspective to go into industry all over the world and transform it. For us, it was very important that not only the student had the opportunity to think differently and, and understand the, the opportunities of a circular economy, but also that within the university there was knowledge built. So it wasn't just the student who came and who went off into industry and did amazing things, which obviously we, we very much hope would happen. But it's also the fact that the university develops knowledge. The mentors come here. It may not be the same mentor from each university every year. So we build that knowledge and then we have the opportunity to undertake research. And that's also a subject that we both believe very strongly in, research into this space so that we can then enable more businesses and more change within this direction. So that, that was an important element. But if you look at the world that they're inheriting, 130 some odd years after the first industrial revolution, they see the successes of that, they also see the failures and they're inheriting those failures. They look around at waste, they look at landfills and dumps and the ocean filling with plastic. They look at the impacts of climate change. They think about the future world where we're running out of minerals for all the products that they use, the electronics that everybody has. They know water is becoming a valuable resource and it's limited. So they have this fundamentally different view of the world than any generation before them across the board that the world's resources are not infinite and they've got to plan differently and create, perhaps you could call, call it a different operating system. We call it a second industrial revolution based on new understanding, right? You can't look back at the first revolution and say, oh, what were they thinking? They did what they knew. The world was never going to run out of anything. It was really big. If you visit people in the central part of the United States who live in these vast open states, they'll still look at you and say, we're not running out of anything, are you kidding, right? Why do we need to recycle anything? But the reality is, if everyone on the planet consumed the way American consumers do today, we'd need four and a half planets worth of resources. So clearly we have a different problem to solve. I think young people understand that. And I think our fellows are going to, over time, make a real stab at solving the problem. I think Wendy touched on a really important point, and that is the fact that young people, they, they want to do things differently. And I think what we find with the circular economy and the fellowship program and the work they're doing here in London this week in the summer school, it offers a, a coherent framework for change. So you can throw ideas in there. We can talk about the circular economy, which involves different design, different business models, different material science, case studies, work that's been done over the last 20 years. You can throw this all in a mix and say, if we can redesign the economy within this framework, what can it look like? You know, it can be regenerative, it can be restorative, it can deliver more value, it can decouple growth from resource constraints. And suddenly when they see that opportunity, it's, it's not just saying, we haven't got much left, let's be really careful how we use it. You're saying, if we totally rethink the economy, we can change the way everything functions. From my perspective, this is the first class of what we hope will be many, many, many classes and larger ones. Uh, we're funding this together at this point. We would love to see some larger funders come in from industry who recognize as these students graduate through these programs and get placed into their, their uh, operations that they're so valuable, that they've got such an interesting and new perspective on industrial design, on supply chains, on production, on distribution, on materials, on all the things that, that we think companies really do have to look seriously at in the next decade even. You know, we're here in London in the middle of the summer school 
this third day is at the C100 Summit. So the foundation doesn't just work in education, we work on insight, we work with business and with education. And actually what we found when we went through the process of bringing together the, the students is that really interested them. They were fascinated by the economics, they could see it was about jobs, it was about innovation, it was about creativity, their futures and the fact that we bring businesses together. You know, they've come here, they're networking with some of the most um, forward-looking businesses in the world who are here today. So I think bringing those three together is important. And as Wendy said, for the success of the, as the fellowship program, we want business to come in to help to fund this because it's, it's vital information and, and really forward-thinking skills these young people have. But that also involves the young people going into business for that to be realized. So then being here with business today is an important part of that step. The question now is how do we get it adopted? How do we get the circular economy adopted? How do we find the demand and feed it? So that's the challenge, but I think uh, if, if we, again, adopt the model of lots and lots and lots of people who are in a kind of alumni network of, of the Schmidt-MacArthur uh, Fellows Program, we'll know if we're successful. We'll, we'll find the leadership that we're looking for.